Thank you for keeping us company. This is Y254 TV discussion. Monday kicks off right now with our topic of discussion being the climate change and forest conservation. I'm speaking to Julius Kamau, the Chief Conservator of Forest with Kenya uh, Forest Service, and Dr. Richard Mwita from C he is a senior assistant director, Kenya Meteorological Department. It's an honor to have you, gentlemen. Many thanks for coming. Welcome. Now, uh, we begin with some facts here where the signs and impacts of global warming are speeding up with the data from World Meteorological Organization showing that a five, uh, five year period of 2014 to 2019 has been a warmer on records and the uh, WHM who therefore says the carbon cutting efforts must be intensified. We saw last week a busy uh, people marching in the cities, including even in Kenya. Uh, they were calling on governments to address the climate change. And as we speak, about 60 heads of states are meeting in a special UN summit with countries expected to announce a new action to limit the cause of warming or to speak initiatives developed by a coalition of nations where our president is as there. Now, um, UN General Secretary Guterres has asked that as well as committing to zero emissions by 2050, countries should reduce subsidies for fossil fuel and stop building new coal-fired power stations. We saw even Lamu uh, coal plant being uh, cancelled and we want to begin another discussion tonight. The summit that is there, uh, we have seen the effects of global warming. I want to begin with you, Julius. What do you think? will happen what's the essence or what the effect will we see after this summit uh, basically i'll speak from the <coughs> kenya forest service perspective where we are mandated to ensure sustainable management protection and conservation of forest resources in kenya and i will also tackle the implication or the relationship between forest conservation and protection okay. and climate change okay. and therefore one of the segment of the 74 74 uh, unga Mm -hmm. uh, as currently happening yeah. is actually the issue of de deforestation, right. which also has an impact relationship with the climate change. Yeah. And therefore, from where we sit as a country, basically what we would expect is a more solid commitment, especially towards addressing the issues of all threats that may lead to forest degradation and deforestation. Yeah. And that's where we come in as a Kenya Forest Service to support the call to ensure that all the forest resources we have right. actually are secured and protected. All right. Yes. Thank you. Dr. Mutai, uh, from the Met Department, I'm sure you'll be highly, you have been highly affected by uh, the climate change and speaking of global warming. And we saw what happened with the government of Kenya uh, bringing down the uh, Lamu port with the coal. How do you think this summit will be a game changer moving on? Thank you very much, Hilary, for having me here. Um, I would say that... Uh, uh, use your mic, please. Thank you. I would say that uh, climate change is a global issue. And therefore, as a Kenya Meteorological Department, uh, our mandate is actually to just observe, uh, you know, surveys, atmospheric and oceanic indicators of climate. Mm -hmm. That, of course, includes temperature, rainfall, wind direction, pollution, and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And after observations, then um, we have to analyze and give you the scientific interpretation in terms of the directions which these particular indicators are taking. So from the current um, uh, summit, uh, leader summit um, in New York, I guess the most, uh, the key um, message that should actually be discussed is that uh, global warming and climate change is a reality that is affecting all regions across the globe, but more especially uh, across the sub-Saharan Africa, because our adaptive capacity to the impacts of climate change is relatively low compared to that of the much uh, developed countries. Right. And therefore, the message is that um, uh, the African leaders will be present and other uh, goodwill ambassadors they should actually propose in terms of those countries that um, highly pollute the atmosphere and thus causing the increase in the global uh, temperature to at least adhere to the leaders um, you know agreements all the way from the kyoto protocol to the recently uh, paris um, agreement right. uh, and therefore 
if they can adhere to that without necessarily causing a lot of, uh, you know, we have skeptics who say that there is no climate change and so on, but the reality is it's changing. Mm -hmm. And so as a, a med service, we are very much determined to continuously observe and tell you how the weather and the climate is going to affect us. Thank you. Uh, all right. Uh, before we delve uh, deeply into this matter, now, do you think Kenya will get to 100% renewable power like promised by the president by 2020? Well, I think it's a commitment, is uh, and it's a great commitment, and I think that's why we must be able to move. Mm -hmm. If you look at the country, basically we have a very big potential. Um, for example, if we at least conserve our water ecosystems, our forests, uh, water towers, mm -hmm. we are also able to sustain the hydro power energy, which is a renewable energy. Mm -hmm. If you look at the, the weed energy, you have seen, like for example, we are hosting a weed energy mm -hmm. in a forest estate in the Gong Hills, mm -hmm. basically, mm -hmm. yeah. to support that. We have Geothermal, for example, in Menegai. Also, again, we are partnering with the GDC on the same, same issue. If you look at solar, it has not even been tapped. Uh, more than 70% of our land is semi-arid areas, which have many, many sunshine hours that can be harnessed yeah. towards able to generate renewable energy. So I think it is possible with all converged effort from everywhere. It is able to achieve and actually eliminate the issue of renewable energy in this country. All right. Now, uh Dr. Moita, would you attribute the current weather variation to climate change and what would be the main factors apart from what we have heard about the ind industry emissions? Well, I think that's a good question. Um, I guess that uh, when we look at climate change, the best way to know if there is climate change is to examine the behavior of the meteorological parameters, such as uh, temperature, wind, and so on, mm -hmm. what I mentioned earlier. And uh, if we consider some 100 or over 100 years ago, uh, the mean uh, average temperatures across Kenya was around uh, 24 degrees uh, Celsius. Uh, but um, uh, currently up to about uh, 2015, you find that um, that average has increased by slightly more than one degree, mm -hmm. suggesting that uh, the temperatures have generally increased. Of course, it's not uh, homogeneous. Some areas may have, uh, you know, been affected more than others. And uh, I would say that um, from what we have analyzed, the temperature has increased at least in the last 50 years okay. uh, across uh, many areas in Kenya. Uh, also, rainfall has declined significantly in some areas but has not uh, changed much in some other areas. But we might not necessarily say that um, all the changes that we see are attributed to like uh, natural causes, okay. like the emission of uh, you know, greenhouse gases and so on. There is also the issue of an increasing population. Uh, remember our, our current uh, population should be different from what we saw in 2009. Yeah, uh, we have not yet gotten the results from the current uh, census that uh, just ended. Mm -hmm. Again, when you look at issues of land use, such as, you know, the expansion for agriculture, Kenya is an agricultural economy, mm -hmm. and as the population increases, then the land use, you know, changes in terms of the infrastructure, in terms of the sizes of the farms, and also the number of mouths to feed, and in terms of food security. So I guess there are other factors which are non-climatic, but somewhat they are also contributing to the issue of climate change and variability. Uh, exactly. Uh, that's why I come to you, Doctor. We have seen a deforestation, and he just spoke of the population increasing, yes. and we have seen encroachment of people to, uh, to our forest. Now, how has the call to conserve our forest been intensified? I, I think I would start by saying and appreciating uh, Kenyans, wherever they are, Kenyans now are more aware of the importance of forest. And uh, they are a bit also able to be cautious when it comes to the aspects of deforestation. And therefore, as a Kenya Forest Service, we are happy that we are working and we are serving a public that is very much aware of the relationship between forests and how critical they are to supplying not only the forest goods, but also other ecological services like water provision. And therefore, it is something that we are happy that in a criminal activity today, any regard happening anywhere in the country, we'll be able to know 
And this is coming actually from the Kenyan public. And I really want to appreciate that kind of openness in terms of communicating, mm -hmm. because we cannot do it alone as Kenya Forest Service. Mm -hmm. We do appreci appreciate that there are a lay of different threats to forest sector in Kenya. Yes. It could start from the issues of illegal logging. Mm -hmm. It could talk to about the issue of charcoal burning. We have also issue of uh, overgrazing in our forest estates. Mm -hmm. We also have, as he said, talking about expansion of agriculture. I think what we mean is when people expand for agriculture, it mm -hmm. also means they are encroaching on forestry territories, sure. basically to try to get more land mm -hmm. for farming. And we must appreciate that most of the forest land is actually very arable. And there's, so there's that temptation, even for the people that are neighboring this forest, mm -hmm. they are tempted to come and, and encroach to produce or to have more agricultural productivity. Mm -hmm. We also have issues of human settlement, irregular settlement in forest. It's, it's, it's across the, the country, right. even in Nairobi. Uh, basically in some forests within uh, Gong Road Forest. Others, you have had issues of Mao, issues of Mount Elegon, Cherangani, you know, Mount Kenya and Abadeas. It's, 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 a, it's, a process, it's something that cut across the, the country and the forest. Mm -hmm. But for us, what we have to encourage Kenyans is to know that if we don't protect these forests, then our survival is at stake. And therefore, it is good for all of us to appreciate that and we are able now to respect the forest boundaries and be able to keep off so that we can be able now to protect our resources. So it's a combination of issues that Kenya Forest Service is dealing with on a daily basis together with, of course, the government. And we are happy that we are now working with, together with what we call community forest associations. These are associations that are formed across all our forests. And they are able to partner with us to be able to secure and keep our forests safe. So it is some, something that Kenya Forest Service can do, even though we are doing it through our forest strangers, but we cannot be able to work alone. We need complementarity from communities and other government agencies mm. and the Kenyan public in general. All right. Uh, the, the same question, I think I, I will rebut to you, Dr. Motai. Deforestation. I am sure in a way it has affected your predictability of the weather changes in, this, in our region. Uh, it has affected so many people. How now do you move forward? How or what strategies have you put in place to ensure as much as the forestry department is making sure no cutting of trees or encroachment to forest in the department, what other measures can you use to predict uh, the weather patterns? Uh, I would say that um, for us, um, we have just been trying to expand our observation networks because our premise is based on the observations we make from the ground. We have uh, over, say, over 500 rain gauges across the country. Some are in forest reserve areas, some are in schools, some are in our stations, because we have stations in all the 47 counties. We also have um, other stations that measure other variables, like temperature, atmospheric pressure, and so on. So our, our, our role actually is to improve the network so that we can get as much observations from much of the country, so that when we ingest that info information in our forecasting models, then we can be able to make better um, you know, forecasts. Uh, now the, the challenge is that um, as climate changes, some of the things that cause climate change and variability are out of our control. For example, the issues of uh, you know, greenhouse gases and so on. Issues of land degradation where people cut trees and so on. Where the microclimate was initially good, uh, you know, maybe a certain area was receiving good rains, the, the weather was very good, but when you clear all the, the trees, for example, it is estimated that we lose about 12,000 hectares of land, uh, forest land every year in this country because of the reasons I mentioned earlier. That means that if there was a microclimate uh, factors, which are driving the climate for that particular area, then they'll be affected even if we'll have observation networks in that area. Meaning that our, our predictions or our forecasts will be accurate, mm -hmm. but then the impact might more or less either increase or remain. Right. So I, I guess the, the, the greatest indicator that climate uh, and uh, variability and impacts are affecting us is the frequency of issues like drought, for example. Right. You find that in the 1960s, we used to only get one major, one major drought maybe in 10 years. But in the 1970s, we could see about two major droughts. Mm -hmm. Then come closely to the 1990s and since 2000, we're almost getting drought every year. Right. And therefore, that is a clear indication that unless we do certain things in the right way, like for example, 
a forest station would be one of them because there is an advantage mm -hmm. uh, when we have forested areas they also serve as carbon sinks they absorb those you know greenhouse gases right. such that it also goes into improving the soil fertility and therefore it could benefit our agriculture production systems plus many other it could rejuvenate the water systems you know the ecosystem where we have seen some uh, some rivers drying up and so on mm -hmm. so i think the message is if we can plant as many trees as possible we can be able to return the weather patterns to where they were before all right and that would be a good thing uh, speaking of uh, planting trees i want to get from you uh julius what calls have you made what what has the a forestry department been doing to ensure the calls for planting trees is ongoing have you been planting trees okay yeah thank you for that question and i want to register some of the successes that perhaps are not known to this country the the encroachment problems you are dealing with them today are historical right. from 2007 i can confirm to you from 2007 up to date those are more than 10 years right. no single piece of land has been degazetted from the public forest Okay. All right. So the issues you're hearing about settlements and encroachment are beyond that period of time. It also tells you the commitment mm -hmm. that the government and the Kenya Forest Service has made to ensure for the last from 2007 when we had the new Forest Act 2005 mm -hmm. that the degazettement of forest has not happened. What we are now trying to do is to be able now to create more space within the public forest and more so be able to restore the degraded areas. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. And therefore that's a success to register. Now, in terms of tree planting, basically, this has been happening. Mm -hmm. And you realize that basically, if you look at the 10% tree cover, right. the public forest, which Kenya Forest Service manages, mm -hmm. is only 4% of the land area. Okay. It tells you that if you have to get 10%, we can only now expand the space within the private farms right. and the farmland. Okay. And therefore, that's why now we are trying to encourage Kenyans in their own farm areas, as per the farm forestry rules 2009, which require mm -hmm. any farmland to have about 10% of it are the trees, right. because that's only where we can be able to acquire the space. But also to say that as a government right now, a 10% tree cover strategy has been developed. Mm -hmm. It is being coordinated, of course, by the Ministry of Environment, but we are leading in terms of technical approach and also highly linked to the Ministry of Interior to be able to drive a joint campaign mm -hmm. towards 10% cover by 2022. Now, this, basically, this uh, strategy has been developed. It is ongoing. And we target, by 2022, we should be able to plant at least 1.8 billion tree seedlings. All right. All right? Mm -hmm. And that requires almost for the last, you know, for the last two years and the coming five years, three years, mm -hmm. to almost produce about and plant about 360 million seedlings. That may look as a big number, of course. Right. But with the combination of efforts between us and everyone else, mm -hmm. it's possible to do so. And therefore, this is a strategy we're using right now to enhance and to encourage Kenyans to be able to plant trees. Planting trees cannot be left for Kenya Forest Service. Okay. Planting trees is a responsibility of every Kenyan. Because in where you live, there's a land. And if you plant trees there, it will also give you benefits. It could give anyone else. So it's a joint effort. And we are really happy that uh, most ministries, departments, and agencies of government have actually come on board to be able also to take up the issues of planting trees themselves. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, I'll, I'll ask this because I have seen during events or when there's something being inaugurated or if there's something being given out, people would plant trees. Yes. Someone in the rulers, I know they would plant trees anytime they want. Yes. If today I feel like I want to plant a tree, uh, for an example, would I walk to Karura Forest and plant a tree? Well, basically, of course, there's a rule of engagement, basically. Okay. You would have to engage with us so that, for example, Karura uh, Forest, basically, it has a strategy, it has a plan already okay. on how things should be done. So basically, you come to engage with us. Okay. And of course, we have supported a lot of uh, people, groups, individuals to come and plant within our forest. It doesn't have to be Karura. If you come to us, we'll tell you uh, the greatest need that we need for you to plant trees for perhaps could be in Gong Road Forest, it could be in Kibiko, it could be somewhere outside there in, in Dodori, it could be anywhere, depending where you are. Okay. But also beyond that engagement, we also are telling Kenyans also themselves to look at other opportunities. From where you come from, perhaps there's somewhere you can be able to go and plant trees so that also you can change the lives and livelihood mm -hmm. of the people because if the people themselves are in improved in their livelihood they will not come to the forest for illegalities mm -hmm. basically so we're also encouraging people 
to be able to have a culture of planting trees within their own their own land and, and i think that's something that we can talk about then the other thing would be for example you came from a certain school mm -hmm. it is a public institution it is also required within 10 percent of it land should be 10 percent recover so it's also good for you to go back where the school you came from talk to the to the administration and also make an impact okay. by mobilizing the school kids to plant trees in that school so there are very many other options that we can be able to employ uh, are we achieving the, achieving the 10 percent forest cover by this yes and maybe your prediction yeah. how far will it take us to get to the the rest of the six well we already we are at 7.2 percent oh wow. okay that's a good yeah, 7.2 percent and we are very sure we through the strategy that we are employing mm -hmm. and the public awareness you know like today by being here this evening mm -hmm. it also give us a platform to encourage kenyans millions of kenyans especially the young people mm -hmm. and also tell them they have a role to play okay. and what we are saying is it's, it's a joint effort so the, the how well we mobilize kenyans it's how close we will be to 10%. Mm -hmm. But remember, as we go to 10%, we must be able to protect the gains that we have. And therefore, it's a combination of protecting what we have and also encouraging Kenyans to plant more. So by 2022, we are very sure with the commitment we have, because the government was it has provided about 1 billion Kenyan shillings mm -hmm. for this financial year mm -hmm. to support this process. Mm -hmm. And many other private sector and many non stake actors who are coming together to us to mm -hmm. actually contribute to this process. Mm -hmm. It is something that is achievable. Mm -hmm. yes. All right. Uh, as, we, as we wind up, uh, Dr. Bute, there's someone, uh, he's a politician, he made a joke or it's just a mere ignorant of the facts. You, men you mentioned of planting trees, but this person said uh, planting trees have nothing to do with the rains. Uh, as a met expert, what would you say about the trees and the rains? Um, I would say that um, trees play a very critical role uh, in terms of uh, moderating the local weather of that particular area. I would urge um, uh, this politician to just pay a visit to a place that is highly forested or has trees mm -hmm. and then take time to visit a place where there are no trees and maybe tell us whether there is a difference in terms of the weather i think that would be the best answer to this particular person and i can give a practical example mm -hmm. uh if you just go to central kenya a place called gatanga uh in gatanga sometimes back prior to 1984 that place, uh, I guess it was more of a semi-arid area. There were no kind of trees. People had cut trees and so on. But then there was that, um, you know, call by the former president, President Moy, mm -hmm. to pandemiti. And sort of the community in that area, you know, um, responded to that call. If you compare the satellite uh, images of that area at that particular time mm -hmm. and today, you'd be surprised. At that time, most farmers who are still alive today will tell you they were not able to have anything on their farms. They kind of had dry periods all the time and their crops failed. But today, that is one of the most productive areas in Kenya. If you want the most fresh fruits, avocados, mm -hmm. and so on, you would go to Gatanga and you'd find them almost all the time. Meaning that there was a change in terms after they, they planted trees. Right now the place looks like it's a forest area, although it is private land where people have their land and they're doing a lot of farming. Yeah, yeah. They are fresh, you know, a lot of water flowing in those rivers. Mm -hmm. So in a sense, one cannot be so ignorant to say that trees have nothing to do with with the climate. Right. If you cut all the trees, we'll go to something called desertification. When we have a desert like Israel, you don't even get a single drop of, uh, of rain. Go to the Sahara. They don't get a single drop of rain simply because there are no trees there. Okay. All right. As we wind up, I need your recommendations as we speak about the climate change. Uh, your final words in regards to this. For me, and thank you, Hirani, is just to tell and create interest to all Kenyans, whatever they are, that we are now in the short rains period. Mm -hmm. And this, we should take advantage of these rains. Yes, mm -hmm. to grow our maize and other crops, right. but also to plant trees. Mm -hmm. And I want to really encourage Kenyans to bring trees back to close to them. Mm -hmm. And I was telling someone, for example, if the young people, and I know majority of us 
and majority of young people are listening to this program and even ask the parents. If you, for example, said, yes, I'm going to celebrate my birthday and I'm 12 years old or I'm 13 years old or 20 years old, and you say, yes, fine, I'll be able to blow the candles off, I'll be able to cut the cake. But what if I made a commitment to plant trees equals my age? Something that I can grow together with. By the time I'm retiring, I have something I can fall back to in terms of resources. Right. If we took that culture by all Kenyans today, the 10% cover will be, will be achieved very soon. So it's for me to take this opportunity to actually thank Kenyans and to encourage them to take advantage of their short trains and plant trees. And if we do so, we'll be able to save this country, our own generation and our future generation, for water provision, for clean air. And it's a guarantee by the constitution that clean and healthy environment is good for all of us. It is not a responsibility of the Kenya Forest Service. It's to each one of us to make sure that we can do certain actions that, aim, that actually have a positive implication for our own survival and those of the future generations. Thank all right, you. All right. Uh, Doctor, your final words? Thank you. Possibly I talk in Swahili. Ni wasumubzia wa Kenya. Katika masumumzo wa majedliano ambao tumekuwa nayo hapa ni yanahusiana na haswa shughuli za misitu yetu shughuli za kuweza kuongeza misitu sisi kama idara ya utabiri wa hali ya hewa tayari tushaibua utabiri wetu kwa msimu ujao wa vuli ambao ni November uh, October November December kwa matarajio yetu ni kwamba katika maeneo ya magharibi mwa nchi tunatarajia mianzo ya mvua kuendelea kwa sababu kumekuwa na mvua katika sehemu zingine za nchi kuanzia wiki ya pili na ya tatu mwezi wa kumi, tunatarajia kwamba mvua itakuwepo na kwa uh, ujumla Katika maeneo mengi ya nchi tunatajia mvua ambayo ni ya kupendeza, kiwango cha wastani na hata saidi ya kiwango cha wastani. Kwa hivyo tunawarai wa Kenya kama walivi ambiwa na uh, afisa uyu kutoka kwa idara ya misitu kwamba tupande miti kwa wingi, miti huenda ikakua iwapo mvua ipo. Tusije tukapanda miti kipindi cha kiangazi. Asante. All right, many things. I think uh, people from Western tunapenda njugu sana so... It's time to plant. Many thanks for coming, gentlemen, and sharing uh, your comments and opinions in regards to climate change and uh, forest conservation. They have been my guest, uh, Julius Kamau, Chief Conservator of Forest with Kenya uh, Forestry Service, and Dr. Richard Moita from uh, he is Assistant Director of Kenya Meteorological Department. Now, coming up next is why Mashariki DJ Tieska is on the decks. And also, I know uh, Kendra Lupis will be here for you. Keep it Y254. My name is Dereva Hillary. Let's do this again next week on Monday for now. Good night.